But now I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. Should I start, BJ? Yes, sir. Thank everyone for coming. Um, really appreciate the coverage this year from, from everyone here. Um, that, like I said, this has grown uh, the last few years and, and really appreciate the stories and really getting to know our guys in depth and, and telling our story um, really means a lot to us. So, so thank you uh, for a very exciting year and, and all the coverage. Um, I think in terms of this year, um, obviously we're, we're still feeling the pain of, of the first round loss. Um, but, uh, you know, two, two things or both things can be remain true at the same time. And, you know, we can be both disappointed in our playoffs results um, and also largely really excited about our future uh, with this, this, this franchise and the players we have in house. Um, you know, we, we accomplished a lot this year and, and really uh, put this franchise back on the map in terms of being able to compete at the highest level um, all year long. And, and this is part of the journey. Uh, this, is, this is the pain and the agony that we felt the last couple days um, is part of it. And, and we're going to get better for it. Uh, but it doesn't change how we feel about this group. I'm incredibly proud of our players, our coaching staff, the whole franchise of where we are and where we've come from. Um, and, and this is going to be part of uh, a largely successful journey um, that we're just getting started with. So with that, I will, I will open it up to, to questions. And I will moderate it this time, guys. So just raise your hand and I'll come to you. Chris. Kobe, you've been around the regular season and the playoffs to know that the playoffs are completely yes. different than the regular season. So when assessing everything that happened in the first round series against the Knicks, like how does that inform your decision making this off season? as opposed to the 51 wins. Yeah, I, so I think you're right, Chris. The, the playoffs is, is, is completely different basketball um, than, than the regular season. I think we didn't play our best. I think the players have told you uh, they don't think that they've played up to their, their standards. Um, but a lot of it was unknown. A lot of it was a lot of first-time stuff that we hadn't been through. Um, I think, you know, in terms of the Knicks were – really good team, super disciplined, um, talented. Uh, we didn't play our best. I think for us, a few things that were the unknown were the, the physicality of the playoffs, um, the laser focus you need to have, possession to possession. Um, some of the mistakes were self-inflicted. You know, when you're playing, you know, we were playing games in the mud like we were in the 90s. Um, when you're turning the ball over and they have points off your turnovers, you know, those, are, those are just not being focused and trying to execute down the stretch or, or in the middle of games. And we want those possessions back. So there's internal growth that's going to happen just from going through that experience. Um, in terms of personnel, you know, obviously we're going to look at uh, what we can do to adjust. But there's no sweeping changes. Um, no one's going to panic off of this uh, first round loss. Um, just like there's stuff to be gained from this playoff experience, uh, the 51 wins in a hyper-competitive NBA, there's a lot to learn from that as well in terms of what we can be successful at, and we know we can be better. So to your point, it's, it's different basketball. We have to learn from that. We have to grow from that. Um, but, but we will be better for going through what we went through the past 10 days. Some of those things that you touched on are some of the same things that the guys touched on in terms of a lack of experience, a lack of rebounding, obviously, mm -hmm. because of that and because Kevin Love fills that void. Like, are there any regrets of the buyout of Kevin? Um, I, so in terms of Kevin, um, I think how we would re rephrase Kevin or actually I would table that conversation and just put it at, you know, we're happy for Kevin. And any conversation about Kevin Love will be hopefully when he returns, uh, retired as – a cavalier in, in the rafters, um, we will embrace him for what he brought to this franchise. Um, that was a difficult for him and us decision, um, but one that was made for the right reasons for both parties. And so you can go down a rabbit hole of a lot of different things uh, when you lose, lose in the first round, but that's not one that we're going down. Tom. Thanks, BJ. Yep. Kobe, young team growing with a young coach. How would you assess the job that JB did this year? Uh, so JB's been, you know, through this rebuild from ground up and 
what he's done a phenomenal job is, you know, instilling a culture here of accountability, hard work. Um, you, you can't fluke your way into 51 wins. Um, you can't fluke your way into, you know, the number one defensive rating in the NBA. Uh, that's coaching. I know we have great defensive personnel, but you have to have buy-in from that, and that comes from the head coach. Um, and so, you know, we're extremely happy with, with JB and, and the job he's done. I think he's going to look back and reflect on what we could have done better, just like the players look back at what they could have done better. Um, we're always looking internally of how we can make improvements from a front office standpoint to put the best team we can out there. Um, but when you look at, you know, 95 wins over the last two years, the trajectory of this team, the internal growth of the players, uh, multiple all-stars over the last couple years, um, it's hard not to be proud of the job that they've done. Um, he's hard on himself. I think he's going to go back and, and watch a lot of this stuff. But I, I also know um, that, that the players love playing for him. He's created a, an amazing atmosphere here. Um, and there's excitement. There's excitement. And like I said, both things have remained true in terms of the disappointment of the last 10 days, but also what we got going forward. Respectfully, there's been a lot of external noise about his future and given the, the history here as well. Do you want to quash any of that? With JB, I haven't heard that. <laughs> um, so, and certainly not from me. You know, me and JB did exit interviews with uh, together with every player, and I think for us, it's a like, like it always is is the the summer and how we can grow together in the summer, how we stay connected. Player development remains a big focus for us. Um, you know, Chris talked about you know, obviously. The, the lack of experience. And then there's also in terms of a physical ma maturity that you get going through these playoffs, um, getting stronger, um, understanding uh, the competitive nature, the physicality, the focus that you have to have. Um, this is going to be a big off season for us um, and, and, and setting up players for success this off season going into next year will be, will be big. And that's what we, we spoke about together. Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. Um, obviously, I know uh, not going into contract details, but yesterday Karis talked about wanting to be back sure. in Cleveland. Um, I guess is there mutual interest to bring him back, and what has he provided for this team? No, absolutely. Um, Karis, um, Karis has been incredible for us. Uh, he was traded um, well, two seasons ago, mid mid season, um, for a vastly different role, and. Obviously, bumpy ride that first year with us um, post deadline because of the injuries, and then we trade for Donovan Mitchell. And now his role ch completely changes, and so we've asked him to buy into um, being an all-around player, uh, defending, obviously scoring, playmaking, spot shooting, and all he did was give us um, a career year um, in terms of games played, the most minutes played, um, almost 400 more minutes than any year of his career. He's bought into uh, our performance team like none other uh, from the nutrition standpoint, wellness standpoint. He, he's our rock star, and he's a really good vet for our young guys to see um, going through multiple really hard injuries, how you can come away from that. And he is the healthiest he's been in his career. Um, he feels great. And for us, I feel like, you know, uh, he's a big part of, of what we're doing now. Um, he's, he's transitioned to, you know, you know, secondary playmaker, spot shooter, guard across the perimeter. Um, had a career high in actually in, in three-point percentage this year. So um, he, he's, he's a big part of our attack. And it's a big reason why at the deadline I, 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 I didn't do anything because he was a big part of what we were doing, and I didn't want to lose that. Um, so we'd be fortunate to have him back. Yep. Danny. That's a good question, Danny. Um, I think, look, like, it, it, it's, it's hard to say, like, going off the, the regular season and putting the playoffs aside, you know, you had a team, um, and, and we take the, like, we don't take the playoffs, I mean, the, the regular season lightly. And so when you have a team uh, that's one of three teams in the NBA, top 10 in offense, top 10 in defense, we were ranked eighth in offense. Um, it's hard to say, okay, what do we do to, uh, you know, to, to really improve that, that really moves the needle? What personnel comes in here, takes minutes from other people that's going to actually move that, that dial for us? 
Um, I think for sure shooting, I think everybody would, would uh, love to add some shooting. Um, obviously, uh, the physicality piece, um, but we're not going to overreact and, and make sweeping changes to a roster that um, had 51 wins. Um, you know, it's, we're one of six teams to do that this year in the NBA, tied for fifth in the, for the best season in the NBA and one of the most uh, competitive league, uh, years in the league um, ever. And so those are results that uh, we don't take lightly. And th th that's data that I'm going to give this group a real runway to figure it out. And it's my job to tweak and to help and to create more spacing potentially um, and, and, and finish possessions potentially. Uh, but there's no you know, sweeping changes that are going to the, you know, change my mind of, of this group. This, the character of this group is incredible. Um, you have wonderful young men that really care about each other, um, that have that had real success the past two years, um, and that have a real runway. Uh, certainly with me. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going out there and 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 playing Cavalier basketball. And there are some tweaks that we'll look at, um, but this this is a good group, and there's a lot more upside. So I think, um, look, like we have some, some young players that are going to be great players in this league for a long time. Um, you know, Darius Garland is, is 23 years old. Um, give him credit for his resiliency and what he's been through. 19 wins, 22 wins, comes back 44 wins, 51 wins, and he's been a part of that growth the whole time. He's not done getting better. I think the upside that we'll see, and, and we saw it throughout the playoffs and a lot of times this year where the offense got very stagnant and very ball dominant with the, the guards. Um, you know, our real upside is going to be the diversity of our offense or diversification of our offense through Evan Mobley, who's 21 years old, um, who's just scratching the surface of how good he can be. Um, he's going to be an offensive weapon. He's going to be a hub. He's going to be a dude that we're going to you know, ask to rebound and push the ball, um, get us easy buckets in the transition. Um, he's just getting started. You know, there's a physical maturation that you're just not going to have at 21, that at 25 he's going to just vastly be different. Um, his growth has been exponential this year, and it's only going to get better. Um, and so there's real upside here internally that we're all going to see. We just have to have some patience, and it's hard. Like, we want it right now. 51 wins, finish fourth in the East, a really hard East, obviously competitive East. Um, we see the talent. We've seen, um, you know, runs this year where we were unbelievable, and so we wanted it right now. And, and that's just not our – that's not the journey that we're on. You know, we have to have a setback. And this was the setback, and it's going to help us uh, get better. But in terms of the upside – um, you got two young guys that, that are going to be get, keep getting better and have are going to be with us for a long long time. Jason, why do you think the depth seemed to vanish in the postseason? What avenue you have? I know you're saying no sweeping changes. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't look on the surface like you have many moves right now to make in the offseason to add guys outside of mid-level. In terms of avenues, well, that's a big one. You know, if you can add a rotational player through the mid-level exception. Um, you know, it, it, if you're talking about adding one or two pieces that to this rotation, um, that, that's that's substantial. You know, I, I don't, I wouldn't discount adding one rotational piece to this group because that that could be something that would help us. Um, we have you know ample amount of second round picks if that's the avenue we want to go down, sign and trades. Um, you know, I I also think that, you know the strength of our roster is the fact that we have we're positioned really well for the future with the guys that are most important under contract. So um, in terms of improving the roster, um, we do have vehicles to, to do that. Um, but again, I don't want to sit here and say that there's going to be sweeping changes. Um, and I, I, again, we have to look at you know, what's the piece to Danny's question that we really want to improve and enhance, and then use the vehicle that we have to, to go do that. Were you surprised if the depth just wasn't there? <sighs> so I think. I think our, our depth adds to the core four, right, that we have. And I think we have to rely on those guys to be really good. Um, and, and it's not a depth question. Um, I think they would tell you that they weren't their best. 
And in the playoffs, um, you need your best players to be at their best. And so going through this uh, experience, uh, what, what's that going to do for them? And yes, depth helps. Uh, your bench will help. Uh, but you know better than anybody. You know, your, your top players have to perform. Um, and, and they'll be better for this. Um, they'll be better for this. And again, it, it's, it's, it's margins. Um, you know, we actually were really good defensively. You know, we held the Knicks to right around 100 points, 99, 98 points. We just couldn't put the ball in the basket. And so depth will help that, but we got to make shots. We got to be better. Um, and, and I also have to figure out a way to give us a little bit more spacing around how we want to play. Um, you're going to sacrifice some offense with how we play defensively, um, but we have, to have, we have to strike the right balance, and then we have to have more uh, diversity in our offense. Real quick, just what do you mean by that, sacrifice? So, so when you have two bigs, the way we play, right? We protect the paint. Uh, when you have the number one ranked defense, there's a reason for that. Um, and when you're putting defensive personnel out there most of the game, um, you're going to sacrifice spacing, right? You're going to sacrifice, um, you know, the chance to, to, to really put up a ton of points on the board with how you play. Uh, a lot of people play four out. You know, we have the two bigs. Um, it worked for us for large stretches of the season and some, at some points during the playoffs. Um, but you have to sacrifice how much defense you want versus how much offense you want. Um, and that sometimes would look clunky how we played, uh, but we largely would hold our opponents to, um, you know, obviously, you know, top in the league in terms of points allowed. We just had to, we had to score, and that was our big problem this this uh, this playoffs. There, um, Kobe, JB has preached that you know junkyard mentality yeah. since he started as head coach. Um, how disappointing was it that that just really never seemed to show up consistently in this series? Do you just chalk that up to bad matchup, youth? Just your thoughts. I think there was a a level of, of uh, physicality um, that the Knicks brought. Um, and I think there were times we matched it, there was times we didn't. Uh, but there's more that goes into it because it wasn't, again, like when you're playing in the 90s and you're holding a team to, to, to close to 100 points, those are winnable games. And so for us, you know, we have to get better at um, – the focus level, like the level of focus in the playoffs where every possession has to be really intentional. Let's get to what we need to get to to have a good possession. And a lot of our problems this, off, or this, this postseason were self-inflicted. You know, there were games when the Knicks had 20-plus points off of our turnovers. And, again, if you're playing in the 90s, that's a big swing. And then you add to the offensive rebounds. Um, you know, and again, we're going to get some elite offensive rebounders um, that no one's just going to neutralize. But um, you add that to the mix, right? So I, I, I feel like we're going to we're going to use this off season and also the regular season next year to really be more laser focused on what we want to what we want to do, what we want to get to. Um, it's hard. These guys are so talented. You know, they kind of roll out of bed and are just so immensely talented. They go out there and, and do do what they want, right? And that's a conversation I had with, with Darius yesterday. I said, you had a 50-point game this year. Like, that's not easy, right? You went out there, had a 50-point game, everything was working for you. But where do you, where do you get to when it's not working for you, right? Where do you get to when it's hard? We're playing through the mud. How, you know, how intentional can you get as a point guard to get to what we need to get to? And those are the experiences that we have to go through, right? Because now it's not a talent issue. Now it's never a talent issue with this, this group. We're really, really fortunate the high-end talent is in the building. That's the hardest part. Now we have to become way more intentional, laser-focused on each possession in the playoffs, and that comes with experience. Um, and that's so it's not just a you know junkyard mentality and 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 being physical. We we show we can be scrappy. We won games that way. You know we we have to become more mature in in, in our in our focus, um, especially on the offensive end on the half court. What are we getting to that that's going to be successful? It's hard. From the ground up to get to the playoffs. Now the expectation is for you guys to win. So, just the challenge of getting this team to the championship level from the ground floor of the playoffs. Just how tough does that make your job, and how do you feel like the players, JB, everyone's yeah. going to react to those expectations? It's uh, it's really hard. Um, I, I, there's a lot of gratification 
and that's why I'm so proud of these guys to get to the 50 win marker from where we were. Um, when you have quite possibly the, the, the best player in the world um, or to ever play the game, um, leave your franchise and you, and you start truly ground up um, to where we are now, um, that's, a, that's a great accomplishment. You gotta give the players a lot of credit for uh, being resilient, working on their games, uh, buying into our system, and, 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 and growing really rapidly through it. Um, now where we're at is, is a great place to be in terms of expectation, uh, pressure, right? Now, now it's not gonna be a conversation of, you know, I think there was a level of almost too much relief when we made the playoffs, right? When we were not in that plan. There was a level of relief when we got the fourth seed. Um, it was almost like we accomplished something that hadn't been accomplished in so long that there was almost like, wow, we, we did it, right? That's out the door now, right? Now it's how do you win rounds of the playoffs, which are incredibly difficult. And that's a great place to be. And that's why this is part of the journey. Um, don't discount you know, 51 wins and what that means for our franchise and how that sets us up for the future. Don't discount how we're positioned for the future with this young talent that's under contract, that really enjoys each other. You guys know that. I'm not just saying that. They are, um, they love each other and they love it here. And so we're really fortunate that we have a group that we have in house. Um, and now we have to use that expectation uh, as pressure, really good pressure, um, and try to exceed what we did this year, which is not, not going to be easy, but that's, that's going to be the expectation. Brian, Brian Rose, big girl. Yeah. The starting lineup and a roster that's on the younger side uh, and still developing, but also being a contender and wanting to take advantage of that contention window. Is there an element of a sense of urgency that comes into play that you either lean into or possibly even work against when? I would say, so urgency, there's always urgency in professional sports, um, you know, in terms of, of, of results. Um, but this group has, you know, has a large runway. To your point about our youth, um, you know, for the large part of the season, Donovan at tw 26 years old was our oldest player. Um, you know, Evan Mobley, um, in terms of, you, you know, the balance you talk about in terms of development and also success, that's hard. You know, it's hard to, to develop, um, you know, a young budding um, phenom, right, which he, he deserves in terms of his development, but also being super competitive and trying to, to compete at the highest level. That's hard. Um, it's rare to have a top three pick do what he's doing. You know, usually top three picks, you get to roll out the ball and give them a lot of volume. <laughs> you know what I mean? And lose games along the way, but give them a lot of volume. That's not Evan. Evan has really transformed this franchise in terms of winning. Um, it's, like I said, really rare for a top three pick to, out of the gate, have 44 wins and then 51 wins and play meaningful basketball every minute of his career at this young of age. Um, and it's only going to help him. I think it's going to help him way more playing this level of basketball than us being bad and getting him reps. So there's a balance there. Um, in terms of, of, of how good he's going to be and how much we give him and, and force for him. Um, but the development's continued. Um, I think he wants that. I think he wants to be, he wants those expectations. Um, he feels the urgency. Um, he's already investing in a home gym for himself this off season, which is remarkable for a guy his age to be thinking about, okay, I need to get stronger. I need to get um, better. Um, and so, there's real upside, obviously, with him. And, and, and that's the balance between developing a young roster and also trying to compete. Um, we're trying to do both. Right side, Jeff. Jeff Shadon, Lutero. Yeah. Two questions. Um, uh, Jared Allen specifically, were you, how disappointed were you that he wasn't more physical? And what, what, is, what does he have to do to, uh, to be able to go against a uh, like Mitchell Robbins? Sure, I think two things is one, we asked Jared to do a lot um, in terms of uh, hold down the fort defensively. Um, you know, we asked him to do a lot of things, help, make sure we show our help to show the Knicks offense that we're here and then get back and box out one of the most elite offensive rebounders uh, in the league. 
Um, I think he told you guys uh, he felt like he let the team down, and I don't think that's the case. Um, you know, this is a whole different level of physicality uh, that, that he hasn't faced this year, um, and he's going to be better for it. Uh, but this is a team effort. And again, like I said, um, we were playing games right in that, that sweet spot for us that we have been playing all year, uh, playing games in the half court that we've been playing all year. Um, and you know, he was a big part of us keeping the Knicks in the 90s, which, which again, are, are winnable games. Uh, we just didn't bring our offensive uh, uh, firepower to it. Um, and Jared's a part of a large part of our defense, our number one ranked defense. Um, I think he, he thinks he could be better. I'm sure he's going to take it to heart. I'm sure he's going to um, use this as motivation in the weight room. Um, but Jared remains such an important piece for us. And we're, we're really proud of, of him. We're not here without him. We don't make that, that jump from 22 wins to 44 wins without him. We don't make the jump to 51 wins to the number one ranked defense in the league without him. So I can't overreact to one series um, with, with the amount of, of data that we have on Jared. And one more, um, I can't remember now, it was Isaac or, or um, Karras when we were talking yesterday, but he, um, one of them said that this series kind of exposed that you guys aren't a physical team, and then even in the regular season, teams are going to um, take advantage of that. So how do you respond to that? Um, regular season, we were the number one ranked defense, so... I don't know how you can be a finesse team and not <laughs> and defend the way we did. Um, you know, in this playoffs, I think we were ranked second defensively um, and worst offensively. So, you know, again, you know, physicality, of course, I think we can be hungrier. I think it comes down to more laser mental focus on what we're trying to achieve on the other end. Um, can we be grittier um, in that series? Absolutely. Um, but but I, I don't, you know, I'm not worried about you know, teams trying to take advantage of us in the future that way. Uh, we guarded. We guarded in a large part this, this, this offseason, I mean this postseason. Um, we got to put together a, a more complete uh, game or Spence. games, I should say. Spence. Hey, Spence. You got your camera, huh? I do. Live streaming or what? <laughs> no, no. Okay, no. okay. Um, just breaking down the, the, the core four in pairs. Um, what did you like about the way that Darius and Donovan played with each other the first year? And then uh, secondly, you have two years of data now on Jarrett and Evan playing together. Uh, what have you seen from their progression and why, why do you feel like that will work still? Yeah, so um, great question. Darius and, and Donovan just outside, out, off the court, um, genuinely have a great relationship. Like They love each other. And so that's, that's a huge part that they, they hang out together, they spend time together. Um, that's a genuine relationship. Um, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, and it really was a seamless transition for Donovan to come here because of Darius. Darius welcomed him in. Um, he wanted that backcourt threat with him. Um, and they had, a, they had great years together. Donovan had the best year of his career. Um, and Darius was right there in terms of career highs across the board, very close to his career highs. Um, so that was really seamless um, and, and phenomenal backcourt, all world backcourt that is only going to get better. Um, in terms of the bigs, um, they continue to, to, to um, elevate their games. Um, we saw the big to big lob a lot this year, which was awesome. Uh, we didn't see that the first year. The second year, they started to really figure out how they can play off each other um, and, and, and get better. I think all four had great years. Um, all four had in different aspects, career high years. Um, Evan elevated his game uh, to become a top three defensive player of the year finalist. Um, if you ask me, he was number one when you can guard one through five at his position and do what he did, um, taking away nothing from the other two that are, are really good. Um, but but we're, like I said, you know, before we're, we're you know, so that we're, we're fortunate. Like we have that level of talent here in Cleveland under contract. They're unbelievable people that love it here and feel like they can have real success here and want to be here for the long haul. That's the hard part, right? They're figuring it out on the basketball court, and they figure it out to the tune of 51 wins and being really competitive um, and, and really putting, you know, putting this franchise uh, back on the map in a real way. Um, 
I want to see how they grow. You know, I'm, I'm going to give them the runway um, and the benefit of the doubt, even off this, 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 this disappointing playoffs, to keep on figuring it out. So it's, it's the new CBA that goes into effect in July, July 1. I want to say it starts around 12. So it actually gives you a nice little, little jump. And to, to Jason's question, that's why it's, it's something that's a, it's a real vehicle to, uh, to, to get better. And is the team going to be a taxpayer this year? That's a good question. I think we're, we're not, certainly not scared to go into the tax. And it's never, um, and, you know, obviously, Big shout out to Dan Gilbert, who continues to give us the resources to be successful here. It's never a question of how much uh, resources he's going to provide for us. And if that means going into the tax, we will. It's more being strategic about it. And you know, going into the weeds of the CBA, if you start your clock in terms of your tax, you become a repeater uh, tax. And, and again, we, we're looking at this thing really far out into the future. You know, when you have guys under contract for the length that we do, um, whether it be Darius Garland and Evan Mobley and Jared Allen and hopefully Dar uh, Donovan, um, you're going to get expensive. And so to start your repeater clock this season um, has to be worth it because eventually we will go into the tax, and that starts your clock. Um, and so you've got to be strategic on when you go into the tax. But it's never an issue of will we uh, or uh, can we. It's just being strategic around when you do. Yeah, he, so you, you talk about a humble superstar, um, someone that, that's down to earth that you can have a conversation with. Um, you know, he, um, he took a lot of responsibility for this first, this first round, and I told him, you know, stop that. Like, you, you know, he's been remarkable for us in so many different ways. Um, and, and we told him how proud of him we are. You, you know, he had an incredible resume coming in. You know, this is a multi-year all-star, um, and, and you talk about what he's done, and all he did was have the best year of his career here. Uh, we think he's going to be a first-team all-NBA performer after this year in Cleveland. And so um, we're really proud of how he was able to sleep, seamlessly uh, come into the Cavaliers, um, bring his dynamic, uh, bring his belief, um, and really be a, a great mentor for these guys. And he's already talking about how we stay connected. You know, how many offsites do we do together during you know this season so we can come and grow? Um, he's living in this uh, this pain and embrace and how we can get better as a team. He's he's one of our our leaders and most outspoken guys. Um, you know, for a largely quiet locker room before he came. You know, his voice has been really good for us um, in a lot of positive ways. And so at 26 years old, he still has the best basketball ahead of him. Uh, he has big, lofty goals. And he also knows he has a group around him that supports him um, to, to get there. And so we're thrilled um, and, and, uh, and actually really, really fortunate that we were able to complete that trade. And you had mentioned using the second round picks this offseason to maybe flush out the roster rotation. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, you know, our, our general manager, Mike Ganzi, who likes to trot around the globe all the time and check these guys out, um, they, they're, uh, they're doing well. They're doing well. Um, and I don't know if it's you know, the time to bring over uh, Khalifa, who's actually probably the closest to, we think, an NBA player, uh, when, that look, when, when, that, when that will be. Physically, I think he can compete. He has to get better skill-wise. Um, but we've had success in the past with draft rights held, letting them develop overseas and bringing them over. Uh, Jetty Osmond is, is, is the number one um, person I'd, I'd point to with that regard. But um, what's good about you know, those overseas guys is they, they hold their value um, and they develop and they identify themselves as Cavaliers even though they're abroad. Um, so to your question, um, you know, with this year's draft, I think we have 49, which, which route will we go? Will we trade it? Will we do you know, something like you're talking about? Um, or you know, draft a two-way guy. Uh, we're excited about adding um, you know, more quality young men to this, to this roster, and we'll have a plan for whatever we do with that, that pick. We'll go with the last two, Joe, and then Tim Alcorn. 
Kobe, um, yesterday Ricky came in and talked about uh, how frustrated he was with his health yeah. and at the end of the season. What are your ex realistic expectations for him next year? So <laughs> we had the conversation with, with Ricky yesterday too, and, you know, I don't care. And, and there's nobody that um, put more work into his return um, that was more conscientious, more methodical, um, you know, that worked every day to return. Uh, we put him in a tough position to, to return to a team that was already um, in full swing, has having a lot of success. Um, and just from an analytic standpoint, anybody coming off an ACL standpoint, like they lose 30 to 40% capacity that first time back, that first year back, because they missed 12 months of basketball. And I told them that. I said, look, we're, we weren't expecting the Ricky, the, the Olympics Ricky that we got um, in those 44 wins. Um, you know, we think year two Ricky is going to return to that because it's just really hard to miss 12 months of basketball and return the way he, re you know, he played for us the year before. And so taking a little pressure off of him, knowing that, you know, his best basketball for us is, is going to be next year. And that's going to be part of our internal growth, too. Um, you know, in terms of acquiring some from the outside, we know Ricky's going to put so many hours into this off season. Um, you know, there's a there's a question if he's going to play national team for Spain or not. He'll he'll answer that. I won't answer that for him, um, but he's going to come into training camp ready to go, um, and that's going to be a whole different level of of our offense because when he's back. We're pushing the pace. That second unit is completely different. We play different style of basketball from the half court defensive minded basketball to the let's get out there, let's run, let's play fun, let's get easy baskets. He can bring that magic back to us, and I think that's what's going to happen. Um, but we put him in a tough spot this year, especially coming off of uh, uh, an ACL uh, injury, and to have the whole summer to come into training camp with this group um, and to re ingratiate his, you know, himself. Um, as a mainstay in that second unit, uh, we're, we're really excited about. And, and so I know he's disappointed. We're all disappointed about the playoffs and what we could have done. But his growth is going to be huge coming off, coming off a real summer that he can actually play. Hey, Cam, wrap it up for us. Kobe, coming full circle, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned you're in charge of making the improvements. So are there one or two questions in your mind that need to be answered or one or two needs that need to be addressed? Um, so I, I think obviously everyone would, we would love to add, sh you know, some level of, uh, of, of shooting that could give our guys some more space. Um, you, 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 you have a wish list as a, uh, a general manager to, to add to. Um, no roster is perfect. Um, you know, you go through this playoffs, you can see different weaknesses in different teams. Um, again, I, I refocus it back to what do we have in house and how excited are we about those guys and their upside and their development. They're just getting started. They're just getting started. And I'm not going to put it past Evan to be able to make some threes over the course of his career um, when he's actually going to be a, a real floor spacer for us. That might be year four or five. We don't, we don't, we don't know. Um, and so that's why you don't overreact to this one series. Um, knowing what you have in house and knowing that you have the, run, the runway you do have, um, we will look at all opportunities like we always have. Uh, but this, this group we're super proud of and we're going to invest in this group and give them the runway they deserve. Aside from you and Mike and JB, how much input do you take from the guys to say, hey, we could use this or here's something that we saw? No, sure, and, and that, that goes on, obviously, in our, our exits. Um, it's stuff that, obviously, we'll, we'll keep internal in terms of their feedback, but it's enormously important. Um, but what you get a lot of the times is, you know, they, they look internally themselves. This is what I can do uh, to get better, and that's, that's a really healthy discussion because we can help with that. Um, you know, my job is to rel you know, relieve some of, the, some of that with, maybe some personnel decisions, some tweaks, nothing sweeping. But when you have conversations about, you know, with Evan, and the first thing he's talking about is not basketball related, but physical related, that's a really good conversation to have. That's not Evan Mobley saying, I need this, this, and this. That's Evan saying, I want to get better by being in the gym, being in the weight room. That's a really healthy conversation. That's, that's ones that we're going to get behind. Uh, for a bigger picture, yes, I have to make some 
some tweaks. Um, but for them personally, um, no conversation was we need to bring in someone from the outside. It was more this is how we can internally get better and we're going to grow from this experience.